this is the last little bit of the road. Touch towards uh, Riverton Pike. I'm just on the run across from the uh, cafe, past Riverton Pike, across to Dixie's Ledge where I uh, normally film from. You'll see from the filming that it is quite bumpy. Beautiful view, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Could be anywhere. We at Rivington Pike. Harry. Dixie's Ledge, a fine place to stop. So we're going to talk about the five key mistakes that I made whilst I was doing the Dragon Rally. So what I'll do differently next year. So I'm just here at Dixie's Ledge at uh, Rivington. I'm just going to uh, show you the view. Monkey Dick's Adventures. Look at that. Gorgeous up here, guys. Bit of a rough road to get here, but uh, well worth it. What a fine place to bring your monkey bike. So, I'm making this video to talk about the uh, five key mistakes that I made uh, when I did the Dragon Rally in the middle of February 2022. So uh, just to get this right, the, uh, the monkey was fantastic, uh, didn't skip a beat at all during the uh, entire trip. Uh, all the mistakes were on my part and uh, you know, I just want to make sure that anybody else doing it doesn't make the same kind of mistakes. Uh, as I was filming then, uh, a guy was walking past and he took interest in monkey, a guy called Lee, cracking bloke, and he uh, wanted to try the uh, monkey out, so uh, this will be him now. Lee, Manchester. Fantastic. First time on a monkey? Yeah, sure is. Why get one? Yeah, don't it feel like a like a normal sized yeah, bike? Yeah, it does. It's more comfortable than my bike. Yeah, I mean, I can go 200 miles on that in a day, and I, and I still feel fresh as a day. It's brilliant. But yeah. uh, I mean, three people there since they've been watching my channel have bought monkey bikes. Yeah. So let's. I didn't think they were this comfy. That's it. See if you can be number four, because <laughs> there's always room in garage for one. Yeah. And it and it does really suit you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, and especially when you see it on. A Monkey Dick's Adventures and you're there at Dixie's Ledge. <laughs> yes, oh, I'm that, mate. Oh, that fantastic, that, mate. 
So getting back to it then, so uh, the five key mistakes that I made when I, uh, you know, when I went on the Dragon Rally, uh, the first main one was uh, taking too much stuff. Now I had um, five litres of water with me, which was ridiculous if you think about it. It's over a gallon, and uh, only had uh, <laughs> only had an hot chocolate, so I, I used basically a cup of water, and uh, and I took over a gallon. On top of that, I had uh, five cans of beer that I didn't drink. I had uh, uh, one of the packs of bacon lardons that I didn't eat. I had loads of different snacks and pieces that uh, that I just didn't use. So, uh, so that's one. Like number one is uh, don't take too much gear. I mean, uh, you'll see on my previous videos that uh, that the monkey bike was really, really uh, loaded up. I mean, it was loaded securely, but there was just so much stuff that I I didn't really need. Loaded like she's never been loaded before. Monkey Dick's adventures. Look at that. Because <laughs> you've got to think, I was uh, I was loaded down with it uh, all the way to uh, to Conway, then past Capel Curig, up near Snowdonia, and then uh, all the way back, uh, completely drenched. So uh, yeah, don't take much too much stuff. So number two is slightly related. It's my tent. My tent was way too big. So uh, you know, basically, I had uh, a Van Gogh. Turini 200, which was uh, quite a big tent, which you'll see on the uh, on my past videos. Uh, put it up; it was a nightmare putting up because of the size of it. By the time I got the poles in, I was trying to uh, put one of the pegs in, and the entire thing was lifting off the ground, and it was like uh, windsurfing just trying to get it to to fix to the floor. Uh, also, as well, it takes up a hell of a lot of room in your in your stuff. So, uh, so my big dry bag, the 350 dry bag, was completely filled by the tent. So, uh, you know, next time I'll take a much smaller tent. Uh, I saw lots of other people with small tents there that uh, cope just as well. You know, they had a bit of a canopy on the front of the tent and, uh, and that was like a dry place for the clothes, etc. Mine, it just became uh, a mud fest in one half of my tent, so you couldn't really use it anyway. So, I was well not bothered having it. Number three is going to be uh, weatherproofing. So. I thought I'd got quite uh, quite weatherproof gear. I'd bought uh, a set of bell staffs, uh, like from the 1980s, because uh, I used to use bell staffs back in the day, and uh, they were brilliant. But what I hadn't uh, accounted for was the fact that uh, you really need to re-wax them every 12 months or so. And obviously the ones that I'd got, these ones that I've got on, uh, obviously hadn't been re-waxed because, uh, you know, as I said, by seven o'clock on the Saturday night, I was absolutely drenched. So uh, <laughs> what I would say is make sure you've got proper good waterproof gear. Uh, so yeah, make sure you've got waterproof gear and, uh, and take enough of it as well. Take, uh, take spares, take extras. One thing that I will do next time is take a dry bag with uh, a full set of clothes, including jumper, trousers, undies, etc. You know, put some waterproofs as well. And so I've got something that I can put on because uh, I had to get up on Sunday morning uh, and put uh, wet boxes on, wet clothes on, uh, and then ride all the way back from near Snowdonia to uh, to Manchester, which was blooming freezing. So uh, yeah, make sure you've got uh, the right gear with you. So don't take too much stuff, but make sure you've got the right gear. Viva the monkey revolution! Viva the monkey revolution! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Number four is going to be about your boots as well, because uh, I mean a lot of people I spoke to, they had uh, they had what they thought were pretty waterproof boots on, but they were saying, nah, these are wet now, and my socks are wet as well. And uh, one thing that uh, a lot of people mentioned to me was that uh, they'd got these uh, seal skin socks, which even when they get wet on the outside, the inside are always nice and uh, dry, which so you can keep your feet nice and toasty. So uh, I'll be looking into seal skin socks for next time. So the fifth thing is, uh, is if things go wrong, about uh, making sure that you've got a plan. So uh, what I had to do was pull into uh, Tesco's over in uh, Conway, which is about 45 minutes into my journey back, I had to uh, go and buy some socks because they didn't have any clothes in there. Uh, went into the toilets, uh, dried my feet off with, uh, with toilet roll, and then put a pair of socks on, a Tesco bag, and then another pair of socks on each foot and then a third Tesco bag I ripped open at the, at the bottom 
put over my head just to keep me uh, chest from getting wet as well because everything was just wicking down and uh, and keeping me drenched on the way home so uh, yeah one of the guy I, I saw on the way back after I'd already been there he'd actually got um, got cling film and wrapped it all the way around his waist and like lower chest and, and over his legs uh, and he was stopping it wicking down into his trousers down to his socks so uh, so yeah just think about if something does go wrong and you are wet damp and you got a long way to go think about what you could do to uh, to keep warm uh, on your way back so uh, so those are the five key mistakes that I made and uh, and what I'd do differently next time but uh, yeah looking forward to uh, the Dragon Rally 2023 and remember VIVA THE MONKEY REVOLUTION